So part two, different part of the question, says that by considering y over x, and we're looking for the Cartesian equation. Normally for the Cartesian equation, we'd get one of these to say t equals and then substitute it into the other equation. That's not going to work here because we've got quite a com complicated equation and we it's not very easy to get t equals without any other without any t's on this side too. So it's suggesting that we work out y over x and see what happens. Well what happens is we can factorize a load of this. We can write that, well, I can take t squared out of the top one, and I get 2, sorry, 2 plus uh, t. And on the bottom, I can take 1t out, and I'll also get 2 plus t. So they'll cancel, and I've got t squared over t, which is just t. So y over x equals t which also means that we can write that y is equal to x times t. And because that's true, what I can now do sorry, this is nonsense, this is not useful. I, this, is, this is useful. Anytime I see a t in here or here, I can replace it with y over x. I'm going to use the first one, the x one, so I'm going to write the x equals two lots of t, but that's now y over x, plus t squared, which is y squared over x squared. So that's already a Cartesian equation, but it says giving your answer in a form that doesn't involve fractions. So now I've just got, I'm going to times everything by x squared which will get rid of all, both fraction terms here. So I'm going to have an x cubed on the left hand side, timesing this by x squared, so one of the x's will go, but I'll have an extra x on the top. Both of these x squared, this, these x's here will go, so it will just be y squared. So that's an acceptable Cartesian equation. You could have also put it into the y one, and you'd have ended up with a different form, but it would still be equivalent to this one.